Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this week I am tackling the Hot Wheels Vintage Mongoose Corvette. Actually, it's a few Mongoose Corvettes, so I'm not sure if that's Mongeese, Mongai, Mongoloids. I have no idea, but anyways. Um, a longtime subscriber, John Crutchfield, sent me these, and the one I was just playing with there was mine, which is my original from 1977, I believe it was. Um, I've been dying to get into these, and uh, this was the perfect opportunity to try to get a couple good ones out of this pack of um, well-played-with, let's call it that, uh, Corvettes. Some are missing parts, some are broken, um, so it's a little bit of a challenge to find what works. Anyways, as always, if you do like what you see, make sure you subscribe and uh, you know ring that bell to get notified any time I upload a video. So this is based on a real car, and uh, Tom McEwen, the snake, uh, mongoose, the mongoose snake rivalry went on for quite a while, and if you're into drag racing, you'll definitely recognize this car, and I think Hot Wheels did a great, great job on this. Um, I loved vintage drag racing. I think uh, once the 80s and 90s hit, you kind of lost all, all identity. The car's kind of lost some character, but either way, it's still fun to watch. I'm a huge, uh, actually a huge John Force fan. Um, but anyways, as I was saying, most of these cars are, are missing something. They're all missing. All but one were missing a windshield. And a couple of them had um, little tabs that snap in. Either the tab was broke or the hook that it snapped into was broke. Um, so step one really was just to take them all apart and kind of see what I have to work with and see what I can, see what I can make out of what I have. Um, every one of them, the wheels were all kind of screwed up as with most of these even mine was that way um so i pretty much strip all the wheels and axles out of it a lot of them were rusted in um they, they were all in pretty rough shape um but for the most part taking them apart was fairly easy um i like to do it just to kind of see the one in the back is mine so i'm not touching that one <laughs> um just to see what we have and what what what'll work together i want to make a couple good cars here <laughs> So I get these wheels um, from Treads, if you watched a couple videos ago. Um, I have two different sets that I plan on using. One is like a just a solid dish, um, just kind of a glare on it so it's hard to see. And then I get the gas the wheels. Now I know these have a tread pattern on them, as opposed, you know, obviously if it was a dragster, they'd be slicks. But um, you got to work with what you have. I didn't have anything that was strictly slicks. And to be honest with you, I didn't feel like sanding them down. Um, so... I put the two chassis that I think work the best in some lime away, and then I used a citrus strip to strip all the bodies just so I could see what I'm working with, and that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm still horsing around trying to find what's going to work, what's not going to work, and the next step would be an assortment of, because there's a lot of nooks and crannies on these cars, of wire brushes just to get in and clean all the, uh, mainly the citrus strip residue. Uh, most of the paint was off, so... Um, you know, just going through and kind of taking a look at what I got. There's some casting lines on these. Um, they're on all of them. They're in the back. And it's most cars that are like this have some sort of a casting line somewhere. Um, sometimes there's a rough edge here and there um, that you want to kind of knock down. So the biggest one on this was the, uh, I think, the pillar between the rear window and the uh, where the door would be there. Where I'm kind of hitting it with the file, I'll do that, and then I'll hit it with the uh, sanding sticks just to kind of smooth it out. Um, you know, Hot Wheels puts their paint on pretty thick, so 99% of the time the stuff's kind of covered up, but um, I don't put my paint on that thick, so I want to make sure I try to get a good, good surface to work with and have it look clean. Once I do that, I'll hit it with some some, uh, I believe I'm using 800 grit just to kind of smooth things out. Um, once in a while, there's a few nicks and nooks and crannies that just, just if you hit it with the sander, um, with a piece of sandpaper, it'll help a lot. I um, mean, it gives it a good surface for primer to adhere to. So I'm doing these cars. One car is going to be white, 
so I'm going to use a gray primer mainly so I can see the white. If I use a white primer, I won't be able to see when I put the white paint on. And then I've got white primer for um, some silver paint. I'm trying some rattle can paints for, for a change from um, all the same brands. So I want to make sure um, everything looks good. And to be honest with you, I ran into the hobby shop the other day and I found them and I bought them, figured I'll give it a try. Um, very, very pleased actually. Um, first time I haven't, I don't think I ever used a rattle can to paint a car. Um, since I started, I've always used an airbrush. So just goes to show you, you can get a good paint job no matter what you use, as long as you take your time and you prep it right. So now I'm doing axles. Um, you've seen me do axles before. I cut them to length. Um, both sets of wheels were not the right length. So no matter what, I have to use axle tubes. I'm grinding off the little tab that's on the, I call them brake drums, but they're just mainly to keep the car from, from kids pushing down too far and really bending the crap out of the wheels. Um, or so I was told by a subscriber. So ultimately I'll take and measure out the axle tubes to the exact width I need. Then I will grind a little spot on each end to, um, allow the axle to go in and I can put a little drop of glue. Um, as always with axle tubes you have to grind a channel for them to fit in because the original axles obviously are uh, half the size so in order for it to fit in smooth and have the same look um, you have to grind it out a little bit and I have a nice um, grinding disc that's that's thick so it works out pretty good. So here I'm just going to cut the original axle um, Make sure you hold it tight because otherwise they're going to fly everywhere and you'll never find them. So, um, which I've done many times and uh, as many times as I say it, I still still screw up and have to hunt around the shop for a piece of something. But if you cut it, you can trim them down a little bit if they're too long and then you can just stick them in the ends or at least, you know, start fitting them and making sure everything's going to, um, the axles don't touch. Otherwise, you push one side in, it pushes the other side out. And I've done that and didn't see it till after I glued them in. So always take your time. That's all. Um, again, this is all supposed to be a fun, fun hobby for everybody. And um, I've gotten so much good, I'm kind of veering off topic here a little bit as I glue the axles in. Um, you know, I've gotten a lot of, a lot of good response lately. Um, I had started a group on Facebook off my Facebook page, and. And I've been getting some emails and uh, private messages on between Instagram and Facebook and, and, and actually here on YouTube. Um, a lot of kids are getting involved in this, uh, whether they're working with their parents or whatever. And I think that's awesome. Um, and the other thing I'm hearing a lot of is, and really makes me happy, is a lot of vets are getting into this. And as a veteran myself, I, I can appreciate that. And... Um, a lot of guys with PTSD find this very therapeutic, and I find it therapeutic, but that's just from the daily daily stress factor that I have because I'm high strung as hell. And uh, so it's good to see that other the people are getting into it, and it's not just a fun hobby, but it's also a little therapy at the same time and a chance for fathers, sons, grandfathers, grandkids to, you know, to, to bond and to have something that they can share in common. So, so I decided to detail the base. I clear-coated it first after I cleaned it. It gives the paint a nice place to um, adhere to. I use a flat clear. And I just wanted to, you know, you can see the interior. I mean, the, the whole chassis and the engine and the seats and everything else. So I wanted to really add some detail to it because I think that's that was definitely lacking um, in the original casting. So I'm going with Chevy Orange uh, for the engine block. I used yellow for the gas tank only because I thought it stood out a little bit. Um, and I wanted some contrast. This was a lot of tedious work, um, especially doing two at, two at once. And uh, my goal was to do um, an original mongoose, or I say original, I, was, I don't do anything original or uh, really don't restore, I kind of customize everything. But um, I had bought, well, maybe eight months ago, I bought the decals from the Redline shop with every intention of doing this. And I just never got around to it. I never really just had the time whether at the time I don't think I had the skill set really to to tackle this and I gotta say these decals as awesome as they are will test your patience they are very very thin and the, the 
the sides because the decal goes from front to back and it covers both wheel arches so you don't have a lot of room there so everything is just i mean it took me probably a half an hour to put both decals on just because it was a uh, you know you touch one thing and moves the other side and it doesn't fit over the wheel well it's just a pain in the neck but <laughs> i digress so i also wanted to do a white one and i wanted to make this more my shop dragster so i designed up a bunch of decals and uh just kind of played around when i design decals it works out good if i have the casting because what i'll do is i'll take a bunch of measurements and then i print it out on regular printer paper and i cut it out to make sure it's going to fit and i adjust uh, adjust if need be these got i think i got it right the first time for a change but i'm just using some microsol to help it sit and settle into the nooks and crannies um then it's just before i clear coat everything i want to do some detailing i did the tail lights the uh, parachute i did the front uh, grill assembly uh, with a paint with a actually just an ink pen um, but yeah i was really happy with this really really happy i'm glad i waited to do these i'm just cleaning the windshields now and i'll dip them in the uh, future shine i ended up stealing my windshield because i didn't have another one so i'm going to be looking for a windshield but as always, shout out to my Patreon members, Chris Smith, Joey Williams, Kristen Staniland, Stephen Mance, William Robinson, Devil's Details, Diecast, Matchbox Garage, Alvarez's Diecast Customs, Jim Silva, and One Time Pledge from Chris Stanifer. Make sure that, uh, you check out the ones with the YouTube link next to them, with the icon. All their links are down below in the description. What I started with, a gaggle of cars. What I ended up with, I am super stoked at how cool these things came out. I love them. They roll awesome. Um, as always, um, stick around. I got some more video pictures. If you like what you see, uh, make sure you comment down below. Uh, I love reading comments, and I try to reply to all of them or at least respond in some way, shape, or form. So, once again, thanks, and I'll catch you on the next one.